Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Ringside Beer Show, episode 21, 2021. We wanted to kick the year off right. Welcome, you guys, back. Your boy, Jay Smooth, here with... Alex, welcome back, guys. And it's your fir- if it's your first time uh, watching our episode, um, we, we have new episodes every week. We do. We talk about MMA, boxing, current events, and uh, fight recaps. And if there's any fights this weekend, we'll announce those as well. And a little bit about the fight drama, too. A little and bit little about bit. what goes on a behind the A little the bit scenes. of the cheese, man. Just a little bit of the cheese, man. You already know. You already know. Tu you know, it's funny. My, my aunt, uh, she was like, hey, you guys should have more, like, drama to get all, like, the women involved. I'm like, dude, we do have that. It's called current events. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We definitely got the drama, and it is called current events. It, yeah, I showed her their last episode, the Christmas episode, and she was like, oh, my gosh. They really talk like that. I showed her the Jake Paul and the oh, yeah. and the little scene. She's like, oh, my God, I need to check it out now. I was like, it's yeah. It's a little more than PG-13, probably NC-17. <laughs> <laughs> That's the rating I would give it. Not quite R, because you know we got to keep a little professional. A little. A little. We try to keep it for our sponsors, you know. <laughs> of course. And we like to, you know, make sure that we present ourselves well. Yes. And uh, for our viewers, we always have uh, giveaways um, and we have a giveaway right now. We do. And this is going to be how to enter, guys. So this is for the Conor McGregor one of a kind painted by Alex Murillo. And this is how you guys enter the giveaway. So you go to YouTube.com. You subscribe to the Ringside Beer Show. You turn on your notifications. You comment notorious in the comment section in any one of our videos there. And the winner will be announced January 26, 2021. Just so you guys know, the promotional giveaway only ships in the United States at this time. Yeah. And there's that's only a few weeks away from the fights. So uh, we have already quite a bit of people that entered, and we want to welcome even more people. So uh, yeah, guys, yeah. we are shooting this today on my fiance's birthday. Shout ha- out to my fiance. Shout out to can we say your name? Yeah, of course. Shout out Anna. Happy birthday! Yeah. <laughs> so, I've always wanted to press that during the show. <laughs> um, yes, shout out to Anna, and um, you know we're looking forward to seeing who wins this giveaway. We've already done. The Adesanya. We've already done the Khabib. Now yes. we got the McGregor. The McGregor. Also, a uh, second place winner will get Dustin Poirier. Not Ain't quite it? to the quality. Let's just <laughs> let's just make this clear. It's not quite to the quality of this here, but we want to make sure that second place doesn't walk away empty handed. Yeah, another painting we're giving away, painted by Jason. Right? It is. I don't know if I want to take credit for it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, let's kick it off. Uh, I found this graphic um, Ariel Hawani posted maybe like a week or so ago. And uh, I thought it was a really cool representation of all 2020s MMA, UFC fights, I should say, all the great ones. And uh, this was by James Culverhouse. And you can find him on Instagram at James CDZN. Man, I love it. Yeah, no, it's you beautiful. can literally go from left to right or right to left. And you're literally brought back with flashbacks of all the fights that we were able to um, witness during this <laughs> tremendous Lee, interesting 2020. Yes. Uh, Do you see the, the, sorry to interrupt, but the second number two where Adesanya is giving old boy oh, yeah. Paulo Costa he's, the little loving from the back. You he's see riding that? him like a, like a horse. <laughs> he for sure is riding his back. That was probably the most funniest thing I've ever seen in the octagon. I cannot lie. Dude, and it was, it happened so quick where it's like, unless you saw it afterwards and right. saw the recaps, like you wouldn't have, you would have missed it. Right. But I like how sh- they started the, uh, uh, the graphic from the left to the right, as far as like the women's fight of the year, which is right. uh, Joanna Janjasek and uh, Will- was it Willing Z? Zhang Wei Li. Zhang Wei Li. And then uh, on the far right, we have Brandon, um, was it? Brandon Moreno, Moreno and uh, Figueredo. Figueredo at the end. For the men's fight. To close of the year. off 2020, dude. Yeah. Honestly, that was pretty sweet, man. If you just sit there and look at it, you get lost, man. You can get lost in all of the, um, just the great things that happened. And the fact that we were able to witness all this, this amount of fights in the middle of a pandemic, and it's just amazing. Oh, we're just grateful, dude. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, Anything different for your New Year's? You know what? Um, I'm going to try to be more positive and I'm going to try to be more polite. I'm gonna just try and be me, dude. <laughs> hey, no, I have so no stick problem with it, you being know? me. I think I think I just need to tone back on being me a little bit. I think people deserve um, <laughs> nice, and you know, a lot of the time I'm just a little more forward. 
outside of the outside of the podcast. Yeah, man. In my real life, IRL. Yeah. And oh. uh, you know, so I just want to try to be a little more nice. Obviously, that's something hard for me, right? Because the fact that I have to do that, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to make a change. You're a nice, so. dude. I don't know what you're talking about, but brother, yeah. you know, perception ain't reality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're a nice, dude, man. Well, then that was the rap for 2020. Hey, so talking about our boys. Hey, what happened to uh, Martin, dude? You know, I think Martin. Um, I think his assignment's actually complete. Um, at least that's what they told me when I was let go from a job. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, Martin. Hey, look, we just, you know, we miss you. Um, but it looks like we're just going to go back to the old man crew, unfortunately. <laughs> Not my choice. Yeah, like, hey, man, uh, what happened to that dude, Martha? I was like, oh, I think. Came and gone. Came and gone. <laughs> I don't Never. know. We still love you, man. We still of love course, you. Of course, bro. That's all Much love. love, brother. That's all love. All right. Well, let's kick it out with some current events. Um, we have here Adil, Ad, Ali, Adi. Oh, my God. My tongue twister. Oh, you got to say it like Connor. Ali, 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 There we go. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, Cody Gomrant's manager on on plans to uh, for uh, his next fight. Yes. And go ahead. Take it away, man. Got you. So it looks like here. I'm interested in Cody Garbrandt versus Jose Aldo at 135. If the flyweight champ is available, 100% Cody is the number one contender. That's what Dana White says. If he's not available, everybody is booked or coming from losses. Excuse me. Cody needs to fight to get up, and I think Jose Aldo is a fight to get him up. Dude, I would love to see this. I yeah, no, love. definitely. If it's at 135, run that fight for sure. Dude, that on a fight night by itself or a co-main event, dude, love it. Love it. Yeah. So I think the reason why Cody's even dropping down to 125 is because he was having a hard time with those cats at 135. Maybe now that you know he got down and, and did that cut and stuff, maybe he might feel a little better back at 135, and that's a good fight to see if you still got it at that. At I think that he's. Th- I think he will do very well against Jose Aldo. I think there's yeah. a chance because it's like it's they're both strikers. It's a fan favorite fight right there. Absolutely, and I mean Jose Aldo. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the guy, but as of lately, man, he's been surprising me. He looks well, good. Well, he did beat Chito Vera. I mean, uh, and, and, I did call that. Yeah, you did. But <laughs> hold on, he he just got on his on Chito Vera's back on the third round and just coasted. All right, that wasn't like a butt whooping. So this will be Dubs a really. A all right. <laughs> Dub's a dub, bro. At the end of the day. Well, it is. It is. A win's a win. Can't argue Absolutely. with that. And you took my five dollars. So <laughs> I'm just leave, I'm, I'm just too. leave that back in 2020. So <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the one fight I got right in 2020. Dang. So well, it looks like here, your boy, who I will not leave in 2020, <laughs> your boy John Jones has a, a quotation about Stipe and Francis. Did you want to take this one? No, nah, you can go ahead, man. I'll go ahead and take this one. You know, since it's my dog. That's your boy. In quotations. That's daddy. Stipe. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say. That's what you said. Stipe. Yeah, yeah, go back and look at the other episodes. <laughs> He's the greatest heavyweight of all time. He has uh, all the stats and the records to prove that. And then Francis is just a freak when it comes to his knockout power. And he's improving consistently. Both fights are gigantic challenges. But that's what I'm here for at this stage of my career. To go big and to see what I've got. And I am nervous for him. I wonder who he's going to get for his first heavyweight uh, yeah. fight. No, it's interesting. Um, You know, that's hard because I go back and forth. Um, I'm still going to go with Stipe. I think Stipe just has the blueprint, like you've said. And he just has... Um, You're going with Stipe over John Jones? So, no, this is what I'm saying. I'm taking okay. Stipe against Francis. Oh, okay. And I so think. that's who I think he'll end up facing. Because in reality, we want to see the greatest against the greatest, right? And yeah. although... Although Francis is a freak, bro, it's like we want to see Stipe right now because he's the greatest heavyweight against John Jones, who's the greatest light heavyweight. Go up to heavyweight, see if you can get it done, and, you know, fight the best of the best. Not necessarily fight Francis. I want to see you fight Stipe. So I'm going to pick Stipe over Francis. Well, yeah, if they get that fight done, uh, Stipe versus Francis Ungano, that would be, I mean, he's rightfully uh, earned that fight already. 100%. so. So let that fight happen. And let the cards lay where they may, you know, for John Jones. Absolutely, yeah. Honestly, you kind of got to let fate be fate. Yeah, can't really control too much. So, um, let you know, let these guys duke it out. See who comes out on top. And John that was Jones a fun is little great. update. Yeah, yeah, man. What do we always, got next? I'm always about the John Jones. Oh news. yes, I'm pumped for this. This was Dana White speaking on uh, the Masvidal versus Covington fight. His we're working on the fight. It's the fight we want to, we want, and to hopefully we'll get that done this year. You know, this year, huh? You. Can we get it done somewhere in the earlier 
first quarter part. I'm yeah. hoping by March they can get this fight done. Yeah, man. I, I hope so as well. Because this is something that has to go down for the division. Um, it's starting to get a little clogged up. They keep... I mean, we'll get into it in the fight announcements or a little bit further on, I think. Oh, actually, we didn't put it up there. We made us... I will break some news right now. February 13th, uh, Kamaru Usman versus Gilbert Burns got rebooked. February yes. 13th. It's official. So now... This is a way to unclog the division. Yeah. We got a little too much toilet paper in the toilet bowl, and it got clogged up, and we need to flush. So get out <laughs> get out the old uh, squeegee. What is it? The old plunger. The old plunger. And Dude, I didn't give you none work. of the uh, fight announcements. I don't think we Dude, that's how that's how, this is how 2020 is still lingering up for us. Hey, you know what? We're going to we're going to make do though. We're going to continue to move like that wasn't a mistake. There we go. Keep on trucking. You know All right, brother. Saying? Oh, just made another one. Here we go. <laughs> All right, we got a uh, well semi breaking news. Curtis Blades and Derek Lewis has a new date. The heavyweight fight which was originally scheduled for November 28th will headline the UFC Fight Night event on February 20th, according to the, uh, according to sources. Sweet. So that's going to be the week after that Kamar Usman Gilbert Burns fight. Yep. Looks like they're going to be, um, you know, trying to get that fight going. Who do you got in that fight? Ooh, I have to go with Curtis blades. Mm-hmm. Uh, just with his, I, I feel like he can out, I guess outlast Derek Lewis. Cause Derek Lewis, unless he improves his cardio, which he kind of did on his last fight. Right. He's kind of like, He's just a wild card. Well, he is a wild card because you never, you can, can't even count him out because he could lose all rounds, give him a minute in the last round, and he'll come back with yeah, a knockout. So, seriously. it really, I'm excited to see who would win it, but I'm leaning over Curtis Blaze just with his experience, um, his striking, and his wrestling. I'm going to make you feel a lot better about your pick because I'm definitely going with Derek Lewis. There we go. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to pick Derek Lewis, I think, um, just out of the. And just out of the blue, he's going to throw that big, nasty right. I could see it. You know what I, I mean? could and, see it. And uh, Curtis Blades has been known to leave that chin out there. So that's just my prediction. Um, this is also a good fight for the heavyweight division, too, because then a little more of the clogging action going on up there. Yeah. Kind of clears up for, you know, once John Jones gets the belt, who's, who's he going to Who's going to get next? Exactly. Oh, here we go. Now we <laughs> go ahead. You want to take this one? This Absolutely. So this is Victor Ortiz on the uh, upcoming Mayweather versus Paul exhibition. So in quotations, what I'm saying is that Logan Paul will give Floyd Mayweather trouble. I'm telling you, it's going to be an interesting fight. I strongly believe Floyd will have trouble. Logan can box, and he has power, reach, speed, and he can move now. From what I've seen at the gym, I can honestly say Logan can probably hit harder than Mayweather. Well, okay. All right, so let's Let's just drive into this sucker. (laughs) All right. Do you want to Look, start at the top? Do you want to start at the bottom? Uh, no. So this is the thing. He's mm. saying that Logan Paul has power. Yeah. Well, obviously, he's 190-something pounds yeah, right now. sky's blue. The sun is hot. I yeah. Mean, we could talk about obvious things all day. And, of course, if you're on Logan Paul's payroll, I mean. <laughs> you gotta, exactly. You got to say some things, but it's like we, it, yes, obviously, Logan Paul's a bigger fighter. He's going to be the stronger, heavier, uh, heavier hitter. But he's, I mean, how long has he been training boxing? Right. I, mean, I would nowhere near, nowhere near enough. I mean, let's just say, let's say generously, let's say two years, right? Right. Generous. I'm being super generous. Right. G- two years. Right. But he hasn't been boxing high caliber boxers to improve. He like, yes, he he's training with Victor Ortiz right now, who, who has obviously is suffering from CTE from the statements that he just made. Well, he uh, he fought Mayweather and got KO'd in the fourth round. Right. And you know, if you look back in that fight, it could you can say it was a cheap shot, but it all started with Victor Ortiz trying to do the headbutt to uh, it is true. headbutt Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, and Floyd Mayweather says, "All right, well, the ref says go. Oh, you want to hug it out? Well, cool, hug it out. I'm going to catch you right. with this left hook and drop you with the right." No, so that's that's the one thing that was one of the things that I respect the most about Floyd Mayweather is like he's all business. you have to protect yourself at all times, bro. Yeah, that's part of the fight. And Victor Ortiz is uh, clearly an example. You know, just got some guy who just does not protect himself at all times and just says some hoopla. Okay, so let me get a little serious here. <laughs> um, this is what troubles me about this this um, statement here. The only interesting thing about this fight is the size difference. I think that's the only interesting thing. Because first of all, we all know Floyd's a better boxer. We all know, you know, he's 50, you know. Like, I think the only interesting thing is, okay, 
Floyd's a smaller man, and Logan's a taller guy. So that's the only interest there. Other than that, everything else that he said in this statement is literally obvious, except for the (laughs) fact that Floyd will have trouble, because I honestly don't think he will have trouble. I don't think he'll have any trouble. But, I mean, if Logan Paul can rush him and box from the inside, which, I mean, Floyd has done that with heavy hitters like Canelo, let's be real. like Right. That's his best chance of winning and it's only going to be six rounds so he only has so much that he can do within those six rounds with that size difference unfortunately he's not going to be able to get in there and this is the thing if he's going to be cutting down weight let's say it's a cash weight i don't know where they've decided on yet but if they do that's he's dropping so much weight he's already a like he has no fat on him, Logan Paul. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be diminished. He's gonna yeah. be you know, they, they know what they're doing. Oh, yeah, like he did it. it to Canelo. You know, he made Canelo drop down to a weight that he wasn't comfortable yeah. with. He got him down two pounds even more than that, you know? So it, And with the weight cut, you lose muscle, especially for something that big. You're losing muscle, you're kinda giving that up to for the weight, for the weight cut. So I'm Curious to see what weight class they're going to finally decide on. I would assume maybe like 160, 70s. 165. Yeah. Floyd ain't, ain't no way Floyd is jumping up to 170. No, well, I was no. thinking more like Logan Paul. I don't oh, know what he's going to weigh in. He has to be cutting weight right now. He has to. There's no way he will cut that much weight fight week. What Absolutely you, What not. do you think he's going to weigh in at? 180? Well, it all depends on the contract. I have no idea what is in that contract for them, both fighters, to meet at. Like, they both have to weigh in at the same weight. Or Martin, else. find out what that contract is. <laughs> Martin, <laughs> where you at? Oh, poor Martin. Poor Martin. To. Oh, my God. <laughs> poor man. Um, but, yeah, I have no idea what he's going to cut down to. So, it really all depends on that because that's going to be – that's going to hurt worse for Logan Paul because if he's thinking he's going to come in there as a stronger fighter, like, dude – Obviously, he's a wrestler from high school. He, I think they used to do weight cuts. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, when I was in high school, they did weight cuts. I would always see him when I was running track. They'd be you know, out running around in the sweatsuits. Yeah, so if he's not cutting weight right now, he should. And uh, it's going to be a I'm, – I'm curious to see how much he's cutting because it's going to be a lot because he, he's muscle, dude. Yeah. No, I mean, there's it's a game of chess, not yeah. checkers. And it started already at the contract agreements, you know? Yep. So who knows what the um, stipulations are? We'll find out eventually. But, uh, you know, in due time, we're going to see these questions. But other than that, I don't think this is much interest in that fight. Like, this is something that, <clears throat> um, unfortunately, kids of this generation, the hype masters, they're going to look yeah. for those things. You know, the Travis Scott burgers and the, you know, th- these are the, the things that they want. You know, the Fortnite skins. And this is, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, just a check mark on the resume of hype. Yeah. Supreme. I think Supreme started all and, that. And it's funny because me and you had a conversation off air. I, mean, I don't know if it was like last week. We're like, hey, can you imagine if Logan Paul wins? And we're like, come on, man. Like, There's just no way, bro. But it's like we're trying to build hype. I'm like, can you imagine like if, Flo- if, if Logan Paul looks decent against Floyd Mayweather? I mean, we it, don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't think- even know how to feel. I don't think that will happen whatsoever. I kind of no. I kind of hope Floyd gets the KO, but... Logan Paul might be a bigger fighter, or, you know, he is a bigger fighter, but we'll see if that even happens. I hope Floyd just boxes him up for six rounds, just bop, bop, bop. Move away. Makes him look like a child, and then, you know, and then stops fighting for good. No, enough, Flo- Floyd, enough, bro. Floyd ain't going to stop. Enough, he ain't going to stop. Anyways. Stop running out of money. Well, let's go into some Joshua versus Fury updates. We have quite a bit. Um, go ahead, man. Take it away. So it looks like here Joshua um, speaks on a potential Tyson Fury fight. <clears throat> the next fight I want is Tyson Fury for the Undisputed Championship of the World. I think maybe it happens in June. It needs a bit of time, but I promise you conversations, face-to-face meetings are happening with representatives of my team and of Fury's team. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. It Dude. looks like here Tyson Fury actually responds with, I don't think he's as good as people crack him up to be, or he doesn't believe he is in his own self. He's got a confidence issue. Boxing is all about who's in form and who isn't. On the last two fights, he's not in form. On mine, I am. Momentum is with me, and I just believe I take him out early. Very early. Maybe even one, two rounds. Ooh, that's what I like to hear. Tyson Fury. Now, Tyson Fury, he um, he, you know, he did really well against, uh, what's his name, uh, Deontay, Wal- Deontay Wilder. Correct. And... Uh, Despite, and, despite the rumors. And Anthony Joshua, yeah, he looked great in his last fight, but the ones before that with were Anthony Reese. 
when yeah. he where he lost and got embarrassed the first time, and the second time yeah. he just yes, he did what he needed to do as a boxer. Stay on the outside, pick a Reese apart, but it wasn't like I dominated him, you know. Correct. After being yeah, dropped so multiple I feel, times, I feel like a lot of the steam has just disappeared off Joshua after that loss to Ruiz. Um, it, it just the steam, the motivation, the momentum, the the hype, the the belief that you're this, you know, the goat, man. It, it just went away, and uh, we saw a lot of holes open, a on, lot on Anthony lot, Joshua. Man. So. And so now it's like, okay, yeah, we would like to see, you know, Tyson Fury versus Joshua, but you know, we also we also know that Deontay Wilder versus Joshua is a fight we want to see. Um, Deontay Wilder versus Fury again is a fight we want to see. So it's not the biggest fight of all time, um, but. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not as hyped on Joshua. Now, well, yeah, I could see that because they say that he has a glass chin. But Tyson Fury's boxing is so crisp. We're like a, a heavyweight. I'm like, I kind of lean over to yeah. uh, Tyson Fury on Me that. Me too. Me too. I honestly don't see um, anybody beating him, at least right now. He's, like you said, momentum. Um, he's got just things going his way, you know? Yeah. And then right here, we have uh, Tyson Fury on being the two-time Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year. So he says, overwhelming to become the first British fighter in history to win two Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year awards in 2015 and 2020. Really honored. This is the holy grail of boxing. Now, now I'm two-time Ring Champion and two-time Fighter of the Year. See, confidence, you know, yeah. these are the things that you take with you into your next fight. And, uh, and those are his covers right yeah, there. Yeah, look at those covers, man. <laughs> Young gent, old stud. Look at that. There we go, man, from where it's, well, not really where it started, but, like, where he's at now. Like, Yeah, well, you know, first peak and then, you know, continue to peak. Exactly. Some people don't, they reach a peak and then they, you know, die off. don't stop. Yeah. They don't stop. I think he's going to be one of the greatest ever, if not now. I agree. At first, I wasn't quite sold because he was the lineal champ. You know, he didn't beat, um, you know, he didn't beat the guy, the man of the hour, you know. And uh, now he did. He beat Tyson, you know, he beat, um, sorry, Deontay Wilder. Yeah. Um, arguably twice. Um, I would say, yeah, the first time. I mean, Deontay Wilder just landed that bomb, dropped him. Tyson Fury came back from the dead, and it was like that's what? you know you got to give credit to that too. And the second time, I mean, Tyson Fury just his boxing was way superior than a Deontay Wilder. So right. that's the one thing about the guy, man. He has yeah. just crisp, supreme, premier boxing. Like he's literally top of the notch. One thing Especially I do, for a one thing I do give Anthony Joshua is he does give credit to like he gave credit to his opponent Anthony Rees, who was like, "Hey man, it's his moment, give him his, his shine," and you know, hey, I got caught, I need to come back better, make some adjustments, and do that and win the title back, which he did. Yes, Deontay yeah, all, yeah. Deontay Wilder went on like an excuse rant saying like, "Hey, my vest was overweight." I'm like, dude, you didn't he try it on four before different, the fight. He had four different exactly. excuses. He's saying like uh, Tyson Fury's gloves, certain things were on his glove or they were weighted or something happened. Or, and I'm like, all right, I, you can see the, the mentality. So I give Joshua the credit of having that championship mentality. So this is, I feel, is for the, you know, the for all the chips on in the heavyweight division there. Yes, so definitely is for all the chips. Well, here we go. Another current event. We have uh, UFC Eyes January 16th return to uh, network television on ABC. So they're, wow. fi- they're finally coming back, man. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, you know, so the merger with ESPN just led to this even being a possibility because ABC is the mother company, um, ESPN. Aren't they tied up with, uh, or aren't, aren't they associated with uh, Disney? Yeah, they're all affiliated with Disney. Okay, Disney so that, that's what I thought because... is the one of the seven companies that runs the entire world. Yeah, because when I read the article on MMA Junkie, they said that, oh, the UFC is planning to go into back-to-network television. Obviously, they were with Fox before they signed with ESPN. ESPN. Right. And I was like, I was wondering, I was like, oh, is ABC a Disney company? Because there might be some conflict of interest. But obviously, it is now that I read it the whole is, thing. So it is all their interests. No, the, it is definitely cool. And it looks like they're going to start um, that car, They're going to start the first fight with Holloway versus Qatar. The main card is going to air on ABC. So that's pretty sick. Like you're getting a, you know, free fight night. On ABC, just imagine the eyes on that. It goes from being, you know, just, uh, you know, people who watch ESPN and the people who have ESPN Plus exactly. to being the world. Like, yeah, it's insane, man. Different markets, different eyeballs on it. And uh, I mean, to be Max Holloway and Qatar versus the, for the first fight on ABC, I guarantee that's going to be like a, a 
a fun favorite fan fight, you know? Absolutely. I mean, two good fighters to put yeah. um, in front of the world to showcase the product that you have. And uh, I still believe Holloway is at the top of his game. I don't even think he... I mean, yes, he lost his belt, but I mean... Freaking controversy! I don't even think I he lost a step, man. He still I don't think looks so either. good, bro. He still is peaking, like, and like he said, brother, the best is blessed, baby. He's only twenty something. Yeah, I think he's like my age. I'm twenty eight. Yeah, I think he's actually twenty eight, right around there. Man, bro. Man. All right, this is <laughs> here we go. So this is Dana White. So someone on Twitter and they blocked out their name. <laughs> MMA junkie did. <laughs> MMA junkie did. And he says, "Can't wait to pirate the." Out of this, thanks, Dana. I'm excited. <laughs> Dana White replies to whatever the name is, and I can't wait to catch you. Got a surprise for you, mother. Beep. This year. <laughs> so, have you been noticing what has been going on on the UFC pay per views and the fight nights and all that? Well, I know the pay per view went up, the pay per view pricing. Um, but in regards to like issues or anything, no, no. So, uh, I don't know if you know, like, well, during the pay-per-views, there's a little seven, eight, maybe nine-digit code that randomly pops up. Really? Yeah. So I'm wondering if you purchase it, because that's what happened to me with uh, uh, Brandon Moreno versus uh, Figueredo. I noticed it. You can't even pinpoint, like, what time it was. I would assume only the UFC knows. But I remember watching this random... We're talking by like a two, three split second. It would pop up and then it would go away. I was like, what the heck is that? Just random numbers. I thought there was something wrong with my stream, but I think that's what he's talking about. No, it's got to be. It's got to be because I remember when we were watching the Ronda Rousey fight like a couple of years ago, mm. a lot of years ago, <laughs> and I went live on Instagram and... um I remember I was showing the screen and it, the sound was playing and I got flagged for copyright. Oh, well, that's the thing. Uh, Instagram, it tracks the audio waveform. So if you hear something like a commentary, commentary, you get flagged automatically. Yeah. So anything big like that, like a Conor McGregor fight. But I just thought it was something maybe no one else noticed, but I had noticed it during the pay-per-view where it's like, Hey, what is that little digit code randomly in the that corner? That's the code so they can find out uh, exactly. Who purchased that's it. that's what exactly. That's exactly what I'm thinking. You purchase that thing and you stream it. I think they're going to be able to find you way easier now. Absolutely, way easier. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing I don't do that. Yeah, yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I was just no, no. I'm saying it's a good thing that you know we ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah. But for you cats that do, yeah. For all you Twitch streamers you know and streaming the fights, um, just, just if you're you know streaming, the, just stream your boy Jay Smooth on Twitch. <laughs> stream my games. <laughs> but yeah, uh, watch out for that because I think that has something to tie with it because I've never seen that before, and I watch a lot of fighting. And I was like, never seen a code pop gonna, up like that. You're going to have the FBI knocking at your door right like, now. That was our sir, secret. Why'd you say me, that? I'm just helping out my fans. Who do you work for? You heard the it here. Ringside beer. You heard it here first on the Ringside Beer Show, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got a quick word from our sponsors. Sup with it. Sup with it. Ringside Beer, since 2012, committed to bringing fight fans quality loggers and ales. Ringside Beer is proud to offer fresh beer in both 16-ounce cans and on draft. Look for our flagship American-style lager, Irish-style red ale, or any of our other beers in your area. Shop at ringsidebeerstore.com for t-shirts, hats, and tap handles. Get in touch at ringsidebeer.com. Get in the ring. Be ringside. Ringside Beer. Ringside Beer. All right. Yo, shout out to Florida. The whole market is flooded with ringside beer out there. Oh, it is popping. Uh, we have some more dates that are coming out in the Sarasota uh, downtown area and all the surrounding areas in uh, Florida. Um, yeah, ringside beer is, I mean, it's actually, I think it, they're becoming all over Florida. Like You can oh, yeah. actually access ringside beer now. We're not here to take pots. We're here, we're here to, to take, take over. over. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So we're going to get into some Fight recaps. Let's do so it. So it looks like here the only fight of the weekend was Garcia versus Campbell on the zone. Did you get a chance to see it? I yes, I did, man. I loved it, and uh, I was telling my dad because I watched it. I watched all the fights at my dad's house, and um, I was like, "Hey, man, there's this up and comer, Ryan Garcia. Um, he's never heard of him, but I was like, he fights out of uh, where is it? Not Victorville. Victorville. Mm-hmm. 
and um, I remember following him. We only had a couple thousand followers. He's what past millions now. Yeah, he blew up. I he, think it was because of that video he did with the TikTok chicks and. Well, that too. But he also he also started that uh, challenge where it's like the body shot challenge, where he's yeah. like, "Hey, can you take my body shots?" And he was dropping people left and right. Nope. Um, yeah, I watched it from the beginning all the way to the end. I was extremely nervous for Ryan Garcia because I knew uh, Luke Campbell was a heavy hitter. And right. coming in there with the more experience than Garcia, I was like, okay, Ryan Garcia wants to build his name. He wants to build his legacy. He needs to fight real f- – I wouldn't say, you know, they all, they're they all real fighters, but like someone with uh, more experience, someone with a right. little bit higher um, knowledge in the game right. than all his other opponents. Right. And uh, Luke Campbell, dude, um, he did amazing in this fight, in my opinion. But, dude, I was so nervous because they started immediately in the first round swinging, right? And I was like, oh, right. this is, I don't know. If, that uh, doesn't play well for Garcia. Exactly. That's why, like, uh, Ryan Garcia is a way faster fighter, but, I mean, he could get caught. And what happens in the second round? He gets caught and dropped. And Ryan Garcia says, hey, man, after, after the fight ended, he was like, you're the first person to ever drop me. Thank you. Like, he pushed him to that limit. Hey, yeah. that's what champions are made for. You, adversity, bro. Adversity. And how do you know how you're going to respond until it happens? Exactly. And he got dropped. And oh, I was, he did. I that was, was nervous. I thought he was going to lose the fight, dude. It was, it, was a little, uh, it was a little suspenseful because that was the first. So, once again, the whole story going into the fight was how, you know, how is he going to do against somebody of Campbell's nature, uh, of his, you know, experience. And then once, you know, he got dropped, it's like, oh, snaps. You know, this may not be working out for him. But the fact that he got through the adversity, he was able to bounce back and then essentially just turned it up to another level and started throwing those body shots Ooh. that just landed. So man. what was it? Was it in the fourth or fifth? the fourth. Fourth or fifth round when uh, Ryan Garcia started catching uh, Campbell on the, in the ropes and yeah. Campbell turned his back and I was like, that's it. That's yep. ex- immediately yep. the second he turned his back, I was like, oh, the fight's going to end pretty soon. And I think the sixth round started and um, Ryan Garcia was pushing the pressure on him, just lighting him up and just the fans were at, uh, you know, in Dallas, Texas uh, watching this event live and you could just hear the fans roaring in the background, like, yeah, screaming. And then I felt like that worked against Campbell, like almost mentally, because you can yeah. tell from that second he turned his back at the end of that round, coming back in the sixth round, he was just getting bombarded with punches. Right. And the seventh round came and he landed the body shot. Perfect. Yep. And what I saw was Campbell uh, kind of, I think Ryan Garcia was going to come up. He almost, he almost faked it up. And so Campbell kind of put his, his hands and left his body exposed, and Ryan Garcia timed it perfectly. You know what we body call that shot. around here? We call that the old J Smooth. You call that? <laughs> you landed that body shot a couple uh, times, right? Unfortunately, I'm just more susceptible to the body shot. Oh. <laughs> and so it's happened to you. All yeah, right. yeah. We call that getting J Smooth. <laughs> getting J Smooth. All <laughs> right. So uh, Campbell got smoothed. <laughs> There you go. There we go. That's another shirt right there. Damn, boy. I hope that's not my legacy. <laughs> well, anyways. Uh, you want to test it? No, I'm just playing. Dude. Not you. I'm talking about you know, everybody else. No. Dude, yeah, congratulations to Ryan Garcia on just winning because he. you just see adversity through that fight, and he pushed through it and was able to get that win. You know what's crazy, dude? When I see like this picture here, I see a young De La Hoya. And yeah. I'm not the biggest De La Hoya fan, <laughs> but I will give respect where it's due. He's definitely you know um, an essential person to box. He was one of the best, you know, in his time. Um, we're not going to talk about all the stuff he does outside. Yeah, no. <laughs> but um, with that being said, you know, this is, you know, this was his protege. I mean, I could see it, you know, and hopefully this kid continues to just progress and trend upwards. He's so young. He's so talented. Yeah. He's, he's local. And uh, he does train with Canelo Alvarez. And I mean, who's, I mean, that's one of the people that you want to train in in boxing like he's the yeah. best right now he's the pound for pound especially for body shots boxer yeah yeah man he'll teach you how to throw a body shot it, all right i'm gonna stop right there did you see all right congratulations ryan garcia but did you see when he hopped on uh canelo's uh, uh coach i did and then his dad was holding him from the back i was like all right it went for a celebration to like what am i watching right yes. this young ryan garcia is getting picked up by another man with his legs someone <laughs> another man's picking up from his back and i'm like just put him down guys let him yeah, celebrate don't i don't manhandle the guy Come dude, on. he was getting manhandled by really canelo's coach i was he like what really was i was like 
uh, am I the only one who's watching this? Or I'm like a little just like. Uh, Don't get me wrong. I'm all for, you know, I'm all for the um, energy and the enthusiasm. But geez, don't manhandle the guy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're like, yeah. Oh, my God. He did awesome. He's like, oh, Garcia, yes. This is Adesanya and Acosta all over again. I, probably worse, man. I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm about to change the channel right now. Uh, we're like, all right. Uh, so uh, he won the fight. We're just going to turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, after the fight, Oscar de la Hoya says, I, str- I feel, what was it? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, there we go. So he says, I strongly feel that Ryan Ryan is going to be 10 times bigger than Canelo. Of course you're going to say this, man. Uh, yeah, and, especially after you just had to let go of Canelo. Huh? Right, after the, all the legal issues. I just found it funny that they were both in the ring, and they both didn't even say anything to each other. They didn't say hi. They didn't, like. There's probably some pending, um, you know, lawsuits that, that forbid them from even talking to each other. Oh, probably. And then Ryan Garcia also feels the same way. Um as Canelo, like if you've heard him before speak on social media, he's right. saying like, hey, uh, you know, Golden Boy is doing this to me. Canelo dipped out. Canelo's a big enough star to do that. Like right. He dipped right. out. He worked out. his. Right. They figured out the, the whole legal thing through Golden Boy. But I have a feeling if Ryan Garcia fights out his contract he's stuck, with Golden right? Boy. No, if he fights it out, I feel like he might be big enough if he fights under like Canelo cards and ride that Canelo wave until he's a big enough name to do it on yes. his own. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And I yeah. think that's his plan. If he has a plan, I would do that. Just fight out your whatever remaining fights you have. They're going to have to, bro. He ain't going nowhere. Well, yeah. yeah. You think De La Hoya is going to lose out on on his cash cow, bro? And that's his only cash cow right now. That's why he's saying this right now. This, this, bro, this is how he gets his fixings, bro. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't see any. I don't know any other uh, residual income De La Hoya gets. Uh, I don't could know, be man. from the other stuff. I don't know, <laughs> but he might be El Chapo that we don't even know. Bro. Maybe um, he likes that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now we're all joking aside. I think yeah, his, that's his only cash cow. This is his protege right now, like, right? That's and, why he's so invested. And Ryan Garcia is tr- making a name for himself in that division, and he called out. Javante Davis after this fight. I yeah, was like, man, that was, a, that was, he shot his shot. That was a half court shot. I was like, dude, well, not only would that be one of the biggest fights you could probably watch Ryan Garcia versus Javante Davis, right. but dude, you just hit, you just fought someone with heavy hands. You're asking for another heavy handed. We're probably it's heavier, heavier. I'm just like, Oh dude. I mean, okay. So like, like we did refer to earlier though, you do have to put yourself through adversity. You have to see what happens when you get knocked down, when you take these big challenges, when yeah. you do more, right? So um, I respect that. I am just a little concerned. I'm like, don't bite too much of the apple, you know. Let let your let your people start making these fights for you. You know, the, I'm sure there's a plan. There's a plan. You'll come across Tank. Might just be at, you know, a time that's better for you and not for him, you know. Oh man, There's, I just I feel worried that if he takes that fight now, even though he does, like you said, like he's you know fighters doing good, he's get, has really good steam going, he's uh you know he's fighting all the best, he's undefeated. I just feel like dude, Javante Davis is a different animal, and I think like you say, you might be biting off way more than you can chew. Yes, and get some more get some more fights under your belt, get some more hype, some more momentum. And um, get older, get stronger. You well, know? not only that, I would love to see it. I'm just saying, dude, I think this just is not the right time. A different animal that you're calling out because Johnny Davis, he will put you to sleep. That's what he did with yeah. uh, all. Um, what's his name? The one that just fought in Texas. They just fought. Mm. Uh, t- uh, Santa, it was a Santa Cruz. Yes. Yeah, Santa Cruz, and uh, yeah, Santa Cruz did the same thing. Moved up, fought Johnny Davis, did all right. And he got just caught with one yeah, punch just and got slept. Right. Well, this well, not nah, nah, that wasn't his, his time. Santa Cruz is extremely well. He's almost like a veteran in the sport. But it's just you're dealing with a different animal that has a different, right. pa- like different type of power. And then I'm like uh, Ryan Garcia is like, dude, you might be asking too much too soon. But if that's what you want, I will pay you to see it. So yeah, yeah, no, I mean we're gonna watch, but we're just looking out for your best interests. Yeah. And while we were doing the sponsorships, uh. I found some fight announcements. So, okay, yeah, let's so do we it. can we can go on uh, go do that right now. So we have Blockowitz versus Adesanya officially yes. announced for March sixth for Amazing. light heavyweight title bout. Amazing. It's oh. just clearing the pathway for the John Jones Adesanya fight. I mean, let's let's see if it happens. Oh, I hope. I mean, 
well, obviously it is happening, but I just, I really hope Adesanya can, belts on the line. can, I hope Adesanya can win and we get the super fight with John Jones. And I think that would happen later in the year because if they're trying to set up John Jones to fight, I mean, I don't know who else he would fight other than Stipe or Ngano, and they're going to go first. So he shouldn't be fighting anybody else. Yeah. So I, I'm hoping that's the fight they make next, but we will never know. Right. Next up, we have Paige Van Zant versus Hart for the Bare Knuckle Fight Championship. And this is February 5th, guys. Yeah, she finally has a fight lined up, and it's set finally. in stone. February 5th, man. Paige Van Zandt. I'm pulling for you. I really hope yeah, we, yeah. you are extremely successful for like with a new uh, promotion who's just starting up. And uh, you can do great things. I hope you get a whole bunch of money off of that, you know? Yes, I am definitely, I'm right there with you. I think that she she has a lot of potential. And the fact that, that she went to bare knuckle boxing just gave um, utmost respect for her. So. Oh, yeah. Because she was talking about like, oh, I'm a, you know, people are saying that I'm a model. You know, I have a, too much of a pretty face. All right, let me go into the toughest promotion, which is bare knuckle. And everyone You're gets guaranteed scars. to not look the same. Guaranteed. You're going to get some scars. Yeah. Everyone gets scars there. For so. sure. Well, the next fight, we have uh, Hooker versus Chandler finally got announced. Yeah. And this will be on the UFC 257 card with uh, Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier. Yes. Uh, January 23rd in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, and I just watched the interview with dude, him earlier. Check out that little, our past episodes because we definitely talked about this fight. And it's almost like we ta- made it into fruition. Not really, but let's say we did it. I, I, I'm not, not going to steer away from it. I'm Dude. taking credit, bro. That is the fight that I said should happen. Yeah, and we were talking about it. We're like, oh, who else could Tony Ferguson fight Chandler? Can we do all these things? And I was like, dude, Dan Hooker versus Michael Chandler. That should be the fight. And that, then, boom. the fight, man. Boom. We've, it, it's happening. Yep. Uh, it, just, you know, the other the other parts of it where I expected Tony to win, that didn't happen, but, you know, right. in his last fight. But, uh, I mean, other than that, no, literally, you can see the top of the, the lightweight division is starting to come out how we were planning it out. If you guys don't believe oh, yeah. us, refer to episode 20, 19, 18, 17, and such. <laughs> All of them. All Please. of them. <laughs> All right, man. Um, the next one we have at is Kiesa or Kiesa versus Magni. Yes, that moved up to the main event because the Leon Edwards Chemayev got canceled. <sighs> Dude, so they popped how, that one up to the main event. How I feel so bad for Leon Edwards. So like I he, do too, but I'm kind of getting used to it now. I think that's just he's it's just what that's just what he's meant to be. You know, dude, if he does not have bad luck, he has no luck at all. Like, dude, yeah. how many times did this fight get rescheduled? No one else is trying to fight him. Everyone else is booked up. The main guy that you want to fight, Chemayev, he is also pulling out because he's getting sick too. And I'm like, oh, I COVID f- and complications. Oh my gosh, it, I just I feel for him because I'm like, I mean, I'm not a fighter, but if you fight for a living and you have a fight set up and you pull out, then the same fighter says, hey, no, I'm gonna wait for you. He comes back, they do another schedule, set another day, then the yeah. fight your opponent pulls out, and I'm like, oh man. At a certain point, you just kind of. Cut lose your losses. Faith. Yeah, you lose faith. Yeah. And that's that fight is going to be on January 20th on the Wednesday. Yes. And then next up, we have Usman versus Burns. You yes. just talked about it. And this is for UFC 258, Walter Wade title bout February 13th. 13th. Yep. There you go, man. Day before me and my fiance's anniversary. Oh, there. Congratulations. You can celebrate Thanks, watching the fight, man. Yeah, Paper we view. will, for sure. For Somewhere sure. off and hopefully in a nice, beautiful place. The Caribbeans. Oh, yeah. No, she don't got her passport. Yeah, there. <laughs> I got yeah. mine. There we go. We're going to Vegas then. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas it is. Boy. And the obviously the last one is January 23rd. Poirier versus McGregor 2. McGregor. And if you don't know, that's the one of the biggest fights this month. So it is the biggest fight, and just to show that it is the biggest fight, we're doing a giveaway on there the we, two fighters. There we go. You know I'm Hit them with the giveaway announcement. Yeah, you know I'm saying. All right, guys. So this is how you can enter to win the Conor McGregor or the Dustin Poirier one of a kind hand painted canvases. One of a kind. Is it one of a kind? It's one of a kind. I ain't never seen nothing like it. <laughs> uno of Uno? Uno of Uno. <laughs> and I know the guy who made it. So this is what you do, guys. You go to YouTube. You go to the Ringside Beer Show. You go to our page. You subscribe. Then you click turn on notifications. Check. Do it. We'll check. And yes. then you go to the uh, the comment section of any of our videos and you comment Notorious. And that'll automatically enter you. 
for either the Connor or the Dustin. And then the winner will be announced that Monday, the 26th. We can't wait to see who wins. Oh, but, we cannot wait, man. But it is only being shipped in the United States, guys. There we go. Well, we want to thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Ringside Beer Show. It was probably a little lingering of the 2020 with te- technical difficulty, hey, difficulties. We're just, but we're just adjusting here, going back to the um, the old ways. But shout out to everybody that has participated, yes, and that you know that was uh, involved in getting us through 2020. 2021 is going to be the year of the Ringside Beer Show. I'm calling it now. We're speaking it into existence. Oh, yeah. We've been known to do that once or twice or four or five times. Yeah, and so, uh, it's all thank you. To you guys, man. Yes, it Thank is. you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the support. We love you. We appreciate you. And we just hope to create more content for you guys, all right? Yeah, we can't wait to just continue to do what we do for you. There we go, man. Bars. Well, with that being said, remember, guys, be, be ringside. ringside. Later, guys. We love you.